It is uh, 702 and I think we have a quorum. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, for any of you that are wondering who the heck I am, um, I'm Rick Spiesman. Uh, Rick Gross is taking the night off tonight. And so uh, I'm running the meeting, first time. So a lot of crazy stuff's gonna happen. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a nice agenda for tonight. Uh, not, uh, not too intense, but we're gonna start. And uh, we have a representative of Neural Arts Philadelphia with us. And uh, you should be familiar with their work. And I'm gonna let uh, Susan Kahn do the introductions. So Jane Golden is the longtime executive director of Mural Arts Philadelphia, overseeing its growth from a small city agency to the nation's largest mural program and a model for urban transformation around the world. Under Jane's direction, the Mural Arts Program has created more than 4,000 works of public art through innovative collaborations with community-based organizations. And she's won more awards than I have time to list here. Kind of an echo, isn't there? I'll just keep Technology. going. <laughs> the projects are driven by the residents who are involved in the development of neighborhood murals from conception to culmination. Okay, I'll try to use my teacher voice. <laughs> so the projects are driven by the residents who are involved in the development of neighborhood murals from conception to culmination which brings us to the reason for Jane's visit tonight. Mural Arts is interested in creating mural projects in Center City West. And Jane is here tonight to discuss their plans and to hear from us. So we set aside 30 minutes for um, the presentation and for questions and answers. And so we'd like to welcome Jane Golden. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. So um, hi everybody on Zoom. So I'm Jane Golden and as Susan said, so I'm the executive director of the Mural Arts Program. Um, I feel very lucky to have this job. Uh, it's really inspiring. Um, not only do we do murals, but we have robust programmatic areas in education, criminal justice, behavioral health, community development. We have a mural restoration program. We have tours and we have a mural arts institute and we're working with cities all over the country. So this is something Philly should be really proud of. So I'm going to, I put together a little presentation. So we're gonna, we're gonna multitask tonight. So one, um, I'm gonna show you just some work, some new work, get everybody excited about the power of art. Things okay, come on. No, things aren't okay. Oh, Travis, no. you have to tell me to turn on the camera. How do I turn the, on the camera? The, the video, turn on the video on the bottom. You have to understand, oh, yeah. you see it? Yeah. Oh, there it is, okay. Okay, hello, now you can see me. Okay, great. So, so we're going to look at murals, then we're going to look at this wall that we're, we would love to do, that we hope we could do, and I wanna to talk to you about that. And then I wanna see if you have ideas where mural arts could be a good partner and be helpful, um, because we believe um, that we work on behalf of the citizens of Philadelphia. And every day that I'm in this role, I, I just wanna be um, doing like a good job on behalf of our city and making our city a better place to be. Because I think that's really important. I'm the kind of person who's like a city employee and I love it. And like every minute I'm thinking about Philadelphia, how it can be better. It's neurotic, but great. <laughs> anyway, so here's our wall. This is at 17th and Pine. It's a lovely wall. I am a wall hunter. So I will tell you that this is just a beautiful shape. And I'll give you some history about this project. We actually have loved this wall for a long time. And a long time ago, we wanted to do a wall, we wanted to do a mural here and we didn't. And so we moved on to other projects all over the city. And then about a year ago, we were approached by an organization, uh, NSC, the National Services Center, really wonderful organization. They have been welcoming immigrants to this country for a hundred years. And they said, we'd like to do something really dramatic about welcome and democracy and freedom and what, you know, like people coming to this country. And we'd love to work with the artist Michelle Ortiz, who is like a brilliant muralist 
We met her 20 years ago. She's a graduate of Moore College of Art. She uh, grew up at um, like 9th and Washington. So she's like from Philly, loves Philly. But over the last number of years, she's become really well known. So it's a real treat for us to see artists like as a like a young artist and then their career takes off. Like it's, and that and multiply Michelle times like thousands of people. And that's like such a treat to see. Anyway, so we wall hunted and we were looking for a really dramatic wall for this project. And we were like, oh, what about this wall? So we called up the man who owns this wall and lo and behold, he still wants a mural. After all these years, he's like, what happened to you? You just, I still want a mural. So we were like, well, here we are. And then we talked to the parking lot people and they seemed agreeable. And then we went to the historical commission and they seemed agreeable. And then I said to the historical commission, for sure, I, you know, we of course want the community to be happy. And so we're here tonight. We don't have a design because it's, it's a little chicken and egg. Like what, you do, what do you do first? Because we're still actually, if we do this, well, this is a very expensive wall because although from this, this photograph, it's hard to tell the surface is really in terrible shape. There's, there's graffiti on the bottom, but it's not the graffiti. We have to really resurface the entire wall. And it, if we do this right, it would last a long time and, and would have no deterioration. Now it's really in a state of deterioration. Anyway, um, let me just see if we have Michelle's work. Oh, this doesn't. Okay, so that's not Michelle's work. Hmm. Anyway, we'll come back to Michelle in a minute. But so that's the project I wanted to talk to you about. But now I wanna show you some new work from Mural Arts. And this is an artist from Haiti, Place Gabriel. So Travis, do you have to do it? I can't do it. Okay, next. Um, this is by an artist who's from West Africa, Femi. And this is, uh, we did this at the Science Center. Um, this is a 36th market. It's really quite lovely. It's probably um, eight stories tall, brand new. So you did this on a new building? Yes. Okay. Next. <laughs> And this is a new one in South Philadelphia. Really, it was a lovely project. We worked with a, a design group called Natine. And uh, this is just so, uh, for me, this is, was really fun because the artists worked with people in the community, collected objects, had really great meetings. Um, you know, sometimes our work is fun and fanciful like this. Sometimes it's, you know, about serious issues the city faces. But what I think is great about the thousands of works of public art that grace the sides of buildings in our city is that they truly are like the autobiography of Philadelphia. Like I love the fact that you can go in any neighborhood and see works of art. I think that's so exciting. Like I totally love galleries and museums. I'm really happy we're in a city with world-class museums. It's great. But I think it's also great that we're a city that is an outdoor museum and that we're known internationally as the city of murals. Like that's so exciting. I was in Rome some years ago and like I was somewhere and someone said, where are you from? I said, oh, Philadelphia. And they said, oh, that's a city with all those murals. I'm like, right. <laughs> I was like so excited because I'm always somewhat excited. Okay, this is Tim McFarlane, great artist, abstract painter. He, you know, he's somebody who's really gaining a, a reputation. But what was his dream? His dream was to do a mural. And so this is it, like 10th and Callahan. And have a recreation center mural. This is brand new. We did a whole series with the water department about water. You can drink tap water. It's okay. So we had all these workshops. We did murals on rec centers, especially rec centers where there was a um, high rate of graffiti. And we um, reclaimed the space and made it beautiful. Yes. That's, that's a Calarosa. Yes, that was Calarosa. And here is Brad Carney. And this is an underpass that was really bleak and depressing. Um, this is at 9th and Burks, not too far from Temple. We actually did like three major underpasses. We had funding from HUD and each underpass was like 200 feet long, 30 feet high. And like nobody wanted to go through these underpasses because it was so depressing. And now it's like light, there's color, very, very, very opposite effect. And this is on the front of Freedom Theater. I put this in so that you could see we also work with photographers. And this is Sean Theodore. And I just think this is such an interesting touch, right? It's a light touch, it's a historic building. So how do you do work that respects the, the, the fabric of the building and so it lets the architecture breathe, but also has just a piece of art. And this one I really like because it's, 
it's an interesting take on a portrait mural. So this is on the back of Girard College, there's a stucco area. And this is, a, it's about Cecil B. Moore, you know, great activist, um, civil rights activist. But what we learned about Cecil B. Moore is that he inspired a generation of activists, the freedom fighters. And the freedom fighters are now in their 70s, and their 80s. And one of the freedom fighters had, she had for years, because we have a big waiting list of people who want projects. So she had put in requests to do a Cecil B. Moore mural. But the more we did the research, the more we said, you know, we would like to do a mural that's really about, you know, how one person can have such a huge impact on others. And then the people they inspire then go on to change the world. So um, this one is uh, quite lovely. And I like the juxtaposition of black and white and color. And this one I put in, because this is like a very moving piece because when George Floyd was murdered, there was an artist in Logan who did a mural, a small mural around a trash container. And one day I got a text from a, 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 a man, a news person who works for ABC. And he said, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a George Floyd mural in Logan that was completely defaced with symbols of white supremacy and mural art should help. So I was like, oh my God, we have to help, we have to help. So we did detective work. I said, who's the artist, who's the artist? But it was anonymous, so we couldn't tell. So we went, we found out there was a this business association. So we went there and then we found out that, that this guy Randall, who was a sanitation worker, like he was an artist like on the side and completely self-taught. So I talked to him, I said, Randall, would you like to do a mural? Like a mural on a wall, like a real wall. Like we will provide all the supplies, everything. And he said, yes, I have a vision in my head. So I was like, great. And then like, we have a design review process. That's pretty rigorous. I said, Randall, it's time for design review. He said, the design's in my head. So I said, Randall, we're going with it. In your head, we're good. <laughs> and he did this. And I just put this in because it's like, this just shows you, it's like, you don't have to be classically trained. In our pro, we work with 250 artists every year from Kafa graduates to people really well known to people self taught. It's just the range. And I think that's such a wonderful thing about our city that artists can come here and have a place where they can work publicly. And this I put in because this is brand new, a neon piece. And we worked with the poet laureate, Trapita Mason, and we did poetry workshops in Kensington. And then we did this beautiful neon work of public art. And the nice thing is that the poem changes and it's really about hope in a place where you feel absolutely 100% because I was in Kansas today without hope. And yet, in spite of a hopelessness, there is such resilience and grit and a spirit that just won't be tamped down. And I think, I posit, that is why after so many years of doing this job, I still feel absolutely driven and passionate because I feel inspired by citizens in the city. Next. And then we have a program. Now I'm gonna just show you a little, just talk to you about a few things at Mural Arts so you can see the depth of the work. We have a same day work program called Color Me Back. It started in April, 2019. We noticed that there were, we have a partnership with the Department of Behavioral Health. A program is called the Porchlight Program. It's awesome and amazing. We work with people are homeless, struggling with substance abuse, facing deep trauma, really isolated. We work with veterans dealing with PTSD. We work in new immigrant communities. You name it, Porchlight Program is just on it all the time. So then we saw there was a spike in homelessness. So we noticed in Detroit, Albuquerque, one other city, they have a same day work program. But there people are cleaning up litter. So we're like, wait a minute, what if we did a same day work program? We partner with SEPTA and we transform the concourse. We pay people $50 for a morning and try to identify really work hard to identify what are the barriers to employment and then do something about it. We have worked with almost 2000 people since April of 2019. It's, it's like so inspiring and we're transforming the concourse. We're, and now we just started a whole cohort in Kensington and we're finding out what are the barriers to employment? Oh, a cell phone, oh ID, oh this, oh that. And then we work with CareerLink, first step staffing, we're getting people jobs, some of our assistant artists are now Kate, like the guy, this one person who's like a, now he's a muralist. He said, Jane, I was sleeping in the concourse and I can't just happen to come upon Color Me Back. And in two years, his life has changed. Two years. And we were honored on the, we were on the Kelly Clarkson show. It was so exciting. And she donated $20,000 at the end of the segment. Yay. <laughs> oh, and then we're working with the Asian American Pacific Islander 
Association and the Office of Immigrant Affairs in the city to highlight um, the Asian American community in Philadelphia. So this was one, and this is on the side of a very, very delicious, if anyone is, happens to be in South Philly and is hungry, Hardina, great restaurant. Um, but it's an Indonesian artist, really wonderful, beautiful meal. Next, we're gonna be doing a project on the second story wall of Vietnam. If you go down 11th street, it's a great wall. And then we're gonna be doing another project about black Asian Logan, and then maybe some other projects in Chinatown. Oh yeah, we're doing a story mural. I forgot. Right here, Tenth and Vine, on the Crane Building with the oh, yeah. Chinatown development. So I just did this long ago. I I wanted to set up a request that had come in um, some years back to do a project about the trans community in Philly, and there's an agency that we've been working with called Mars Home. It's an amazing place. And they work with young trans kids who have really struggled with trauma. And we just did program after program and we collected all this content. And out of all that content came this beautiful mural that's on Frankfurt Avenue on the site of Cake Life, a very good bakery. Just in case you're looking for sweets. And you're again, and Is you're that a theme? Do you like to put them on the sides of food? No, no, but that's interesting. There is yeah. a little theme here going. This is, we also work with um, Einstein Hospital, their long-term psychiatric facility. And um, we always are talking to the psychiatrists about the impact on people, and it's really inspiring. We also, for our Porch Light program, the Yale School of Medicine did a four-year evaluation with us, and we were able to assess impact on individuals and communities, which was really inspiring. Next. And this is all about activism. That's Ursula Rucker, who is one of our very well-known poets, spoken word artists in our city. And this was an art education program. In our art ed program, we serve 2,000 kids ranging in age from 11 to 18. Then we have an alumni group. We have an entrepreneurial program and an internship program. And so our young people created a magazine all about activism, and they did this beautiful mural. And then we did a series of banners and billboards about citizenship. And we worked with 200 kids in a couple of our programs. And then this is on the side of a school. Unfortunately, the color is really off on this um, on the slides. So um, we believe that every school should have art education and that schools in our city all too often look like prisons and it should just be changed. And I don't even know why we're talking about it. We should just do it. Um, so we try wherever possible to make a beeline in and, and create beauty in schools. And with our art education program, we're at about 35 sites around the city. So if you all know young people, who are interested in participating, please let me know. I'll leave some cards tonight. Next. And this is a series of billboards we did with um, Ken McFarland, who is a fabulous photographer, and he worked with our reentry program. And then this one, we have a, a, a we have a reentry program called the Guild, where we train people in mural making, landscaping, building skills, leadership, and technology. We we um, also. Uh, have people transforming public space in the city. Uh, a year ago, we started a special program, a guild program for just for women, and the women's guild did this what beautiful project. That's in Kensington. And then we have a fellowship program for artists who have come out of the prison system. And in the fellowship program, you can pick a partner or you could do a project by yourself. So this is Michelle Jones, worked with Deb Willis, Deb is a very famous photographer who heads the photography department at NYU. She is one of MacArthur. She's like an amazing person. So together, they created these two projects that we, we uh, worked really, it was a great partnership with Logan Square Civic Association. So on one side, there are nine people. You see them in their prison guard. Next. Then here, you see them in their clothes. And it's like a stained glass window. And I love that it's like always resilient. And it's called point of triangulation because there's one side, the other side, and then there's the viewer. And the artists are asking us how we see people. And then this one is brand new. This is at 15th and Cherry. And this is by two very, very famous artists. In fact, if you, um, you might have seen his name because he's a poetry editor in the New York Times uh, book review. Dwayne Betts, very famous poet. And Titus Kafar, very well-known um, painter in America. And they teamed up and did a series of work that was on display at MoMA PS1. And um, Dwayne was one of our fellows. And he said, well, I'm gonna wanna work with Titus Kafar. And I'm like, yeah, Titus Kafar is never gonna agree. And Titus Kafar said, yes. And then this project came to life. And this is um, FDR Park. 
And what you can see here, this is pretty mural, but our team absolutely renovated the entire welcome center at um, FDR Park. So we did the floors, the ceilings, you name it. We're sort of like the dual mural arts program. And then this, we have a, an environmental justice division. They did a series about COVID and climate. We're also doing a, a climate justice project. Next. They also do implosions. We work with Rare. That's a, that's a really great recycling organization. And what we do is we take materials from here and we create um, community gardens for schools. So we are like finding desks. We're finding any discarded materials and then we're creating benches. So we're creating all this like sort of for schoolyards to have to come to life. So it's an interesting project. And then we had an event at Cherry Street Pier talking about climate justice. And that's it. That's just a taste of a few things percolating at the mural arts program. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> so anyway, so, so the two things to think, about. one is this wall, and I regret um, Zoriana didn't put in examples of Michelle Ortiz's work. So I can put together a presentation and send it around so you can see how talented she is. And then um, the second thing is, I just wanna plant this idea with you that if you have ideas for Center City, you know, it could be a series of small work, it could be something larger that I'd be very open to talking to you about it. Um, so I, yes. It's an interesting mural that it's old and what can be done? At 20? Yes. Oh, 22nd of Walnut. Well, we, we should fix it up is what we should. That's, uh, yes, we've already restored it once. And we, I went by there actually the other day. And you're right. It is in need of a restoration and a, and a and clear coat. She's so. retired and is in the Bahamas right now. She'd love to see a picture of the store. Oh, well, I'll give you my card. That would be that would be great. Yeah, we can definitely schedule that for the next fiscal year for sure. I, I think that's really important. I, I did I did think that it's a brilliant piece of work. Yes. Have you gotten any reaction from the immediate neighbors in that 17th and Pine area? <laughs> Judy went around and talked to people, and people seemed positive. Um, we didn't do what we would do uh, next, which is I wanted to come here first and just hear, you know, if you felt like, okay, this is good, sounds interesting. We're happy to see how it goes. Um, we'll take a petition around and get signatures. You and I spoke briefly before the meeting started about a prior uh, experience with this. So when we, about 10 years ago, when we proposed a mural at 21st and Lombard and you landed with some neighborhood opposition, I take it. Yes. My take on that was that some of the neighbors felt that the kind of art that you do is kind of, I'm not an art expert, but from my perspective as a naive person, it's kind of primitive folk art. And I think some people say, this is Center City. And that kind of artwork might look great in Kensington or South Philly, but it's not sophisticated enough and it doesn't project the ethos of Center City. And I think that was the reaction that you got, the negative reaction. And I'm just concerned that you may get some of that at 17 compliant also, and you may have a similar yeah. experience of the need to be prepared for that. Yeah, I think I would stand my ground and say, like, have you really seen the recent murals in the city? And they're pretty beautiful. I mean, if we could walk down to 11th and Sanson and see the Amy Sherrill mural, I mean, Amy Sherrill did Michelle Obama's portrait. So I feel like we've got plenty of work like that. I hold my head up high. I think it's really good work. And I mean, I don't think you can pigeonhole the murals are all stylistically pretty different. I think Michelle Ortiz's work is different from David Wynn's work, is different from Michael Webb, who was the 22nd of Walnut, or did the Beasley building. You know, it's all pretty, it's a nice variety. If you walk through a museum, you don't see everything looks like Matisse. It's pretty varied. So we try to emulate that as it's an outdoor museum. And also, I'm an artist who wants to be a lawyer, so I'm happy to argue with people for three hours. I, I would, I'm pretty, I would. Un, I'm, pretty uh, uh, I'm like unflappable that way. I, I, I would also assume, aside from arguing, that you have different artists that paint in different styles and and can do different types of things. I mean, 
do you try to work with the neighborhood to find an acceptable or you know mutually oh, acceptable mural or is it yeah, more like I, I, here's what we want to put here? Oh, no i would say it's definitely a combination it's definitely yeah. both so in this case there is an artist attached to it michelle ortiz so people could say well I actually think her work is too like Diego Rivera. So it's not exactly what I want. I actually like Michael Webb or David Gwynn, or I like John Lydecker, who's more of a Papa trained artist and has more of a subtle feel in an architectural style. That then this would not be the project for you. Then it would not be, we should come back here and do something different driven by the community saying, we, we want a mural, but we'd like something architectural. The problem, the problem is that it doesn't always line up because a wall like that is $100,000. So NSC is raising money to do this project. So it's not like we have such a giant budget. We could say, okay, we'll be back next year and we'll do it. So it, that, those are the constraints. But it's, it's a successful project if people feel okay about it. Right. Do you know of what course. I mean? Like if people are, if you all felt like, oh, this is sort of, I feel like unsettled about this, then that would not be, this would not be the wall for the NSC project. It's not good for your program if no. people don't. Like it, right, exactly. So, yeah. Ben, did you? Yeah, I'm interested in the process. Um, I know that there are a number of rules that have been printed on like a canvas material. Correct. And then to the wall. Is that what you're doing now, or are you painting directly on the wall? We, I would say 35% are painted directly on the wall, and the rest are on parachute cloth, which is a special material that is then adhered to the wall with three coats of acrylic gel. Just so you can understand the durability, if you think of the Dr. J mural was painted in 1989 and the figure is on parachute cloth and it never ever deteriorated. So the, it's been tested over time. It's a really, it will last. Um, and the reason why it's, some artists just opt for parachute cloth. One, because you can control the environment you're painting in a studio. You don't have glaring light. You don't have to deal with weather if it's terribly windy. And that way you can really control like sort of the aesthetics a little better and then put it up and then you tinker with it so it sits in the context well. Other times it's really important to work on parachute cloth because we have constituents. We have 2000 kids in the city painting murals. They're not all relegated to just doing the bottom three feet, which is sort of demeaning, right? <laughs> you could only paint on the bottom. Now we used to have kids all over scaffolding and the law department of the city was like, stop. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's how we paint in, in like, senior centers or hospitals or prisons or like we paint everywhere, right? The mural we did with the connected to the Pope's visit was um, I would say uh, really a landmark project and had 7,000 people work on it because we had parachute cloth and we went to 19 parishes in the area and also painted the convention center. So it allows us to be very flexible. Some artists, some artists who, who are very used to working directly on the wall want to do it that way. They feel very comfortable that way, and they should. They should just. They should do that. <laughs> Maybe that's right. Yeah. So, but that's a really that's a very good question. And you should know we work with the best acrylic paint. It's golden acrylic. It's it's really really. For, if any of you are artists, it's just it's a really um, durable paint that's made with ultraviolet resistors, and then we coat it with a the gel, um, and then we try to come back. We have a mural restoration. Uh, program and um, we try to clear coat every five years if we can. And the mural, if you note know the mural of Broad and Spring Garden by Meg Saligman, the eight story masterpiece, I think it's a masterpiece, something different. But um, we recently we restored that a few years ago. And so that's going to be good for the next 30 years. Oh, yeah, she's still painting. See? Yeah. See? Let them tell me. It's not spectacular. Yeah. One man at the meeting, he came up to me. I love this. I'll always remember. He said, I've been everywhere in the world, and I like murals everywhere but Philly. And I said, so you've been everywhere in the world. Then I was like, should I start naming countries like Patagonia, Japan, Antarctica? <laughs> I thought that would be snarky. So I didn't do that. But I thought, I bet there is a mural he likes in Philly. So I said, I bet you do like a mural in Philly. I bet there probably have several murals you like. So I said, 22nd of Walnut. You know what he said? He said, I like that mural. I said, don't make statements like that. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. I'll argue. I would have been a good lawyer. Been well, we're, 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 we're terrified already. Um, so <laughs> yes. Jeff, maybe one last question. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, we think it should be accompanied by at least a concept drawing. That that's, you know, first, you know, it's so funny because it's like, what should we do first? Because we knew we had to go to the historical commission, right? And then I had to go to the architectural review, then the then the commission. And then I wanted to talk to all of you just to see whether you'd be open to the idea of a mural. And so um or, or the way we've, and, and then because we've been struggling with trying to raise enough money to do this wall in particular, we're looking at a couple other walls, but I have to say this is the most dramatic site. So, um, but we but we have talked to, we'll, we would like to ideally give Michelle a design fee and have her de develop some concepts because otherwise people are, and I'll probably have, I'll come back here and show you what we have. I mean, I give you my, like the one thing about mural arts I can say is you will know every step of the way what's going on. Like there's no surprise. Like you won't drive by one day and say, you know, Jane Golden spoke to us and I thought she said she'd get back in touch and now there's a mural there. So that won't happen. I totally give you my word. So Jane. Um, so I'm sorry. I, no, no, I'm no you're fine. Okay. I'm gonna ask the last question. Um, so ideally to you, what can CCRA do? I think if you could talk amongst yourselves after I leave, and you can ask hard questions because I'll be gone. And so, and say, and you can say, like, could we get a letter of support saying, it sounds good, you know, and we'd love to see a concept sketch and some examples of Michelle Ortiz's work. And we would be really open to the next step. Like we would be a partner like in this. And, and I think that would be great because I can't honestly tell you that we can raise all the funding for this complicated, because if the parking lot people keep adding things that they need from us, eventually it's going to be just untenable. So I, I can't, I, I wish I could say more. So it's, yeah, it's a little strange because I can't say we're definitely doing it, but I want to go through as, I want to push it as far as we can go to see if we can do it. If you all like that idea. Okay. They said it will be years and they, they we asked them that question and they they did not think that there would be development anytime soon. So now can we can we trust that? I, I don't know. Um, usually parking lot people at least the last year or two have said, oh, we're developing quickly. Don't don't build there. So this was an opposite response. They are. Yeah, I mean, we have we're just taking them at face value that they they're they're giving us their word that it'll be at least I don't, I don't know they didn't give us a number but it it made us think it could be five to eight years or or longer. I mean, they said there was nothing in the future is what they said. Okay. Well, Jane. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so I don't have the eye for balls. Do you have a like the shape? I know, but is it also because of you see the skyline? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it has a, it's dramatic. So I'm going to leave my card. And if any of you have questions, please feel free to email me. Or, or you could, if they could ask you and then you could yeah, email me. Can, or we Susan. Can, we, can, we can take care of it. And we are also are working on another project together um, at Mark, Markman? No. Uh, Schuylkill River Park. Schuylkill River Park. So yeah. We might do something on the asphalt there. That's fun. Lively. Abstract. So, okay. And if you know of other walls or have ideas for other projects, please let us know. And thank you for your time tonight. I really appreciate it. It's been lovely. Well, thank you very much. It was, uh, you guys do great work and uh, I think we're all admirers. Yeah. Hopefully we can make something happen. That'd be great. You're infectious. Thank you. <laughs>